I felt lost and lonely and trapped in a darkness where I had no control on making decisions that affected me or my family. I learned not to cry. I learned not to need other people. And I lost the ability to recognise my own emotions. I was despondent and didn't know where to go for help or who I could ask. What would they think of me? When we got back, the police were called, but every time they spoke to me, they tried to persuade me I was lying. I hit rock bottom and turned to alcohol as a relief. This nearly cost me my life and my children. Ignoring those emotions and suppressing that experience for so long destroyed me from the inside. The keeping of a secret can do more damage than the secret itself. I strongly think that more should be done about respecting the word no from a younger age, possibly in schools. If you teach children from a younger age and build on it throughout their lives, make them understand rape and abuse is not okay and taking what's not yours isn't okay. We're consistently educating our children about the physical experiences in life and failing to discuss how those experiences can impact our souls. Young people need to be prepared for the full spectrum of human emotion. They need to be shown coping mechanisms and where they can go to for help. It took me almost three years to find that place. So I knew I had to seek help. I went to my GP and broke down. I was a mess. She gave me the right medication and advice to seek help for sexual violence and domestic abuse. I went to a detox centre and I got sober. I needed to make a positive move towards getting better. I needed to take control back. I contacted two people, RCTN and a local psychotherapist. Because I made the decision, I felt in control. This was the turning point for me. I got the help I needed. I got support from rape crisis, my GP and changing lives. Things started to change when I met my counsellor. This was the first time I had openly talked about what happened to me. My message to you and to others is that with counselling there is life after abuse. I have learnt it's okay to say no to a partner if I don't want to be intimate. It was a blessing to have someone to talk to who would listen, not judge, and offer appropriate advice. Most of all, I was believed. If the police actually believed you when you spoke to them, things could be so different. As later on in my life, when more incidences continued, I would have had the confidence to speak to them and get justice. We need a safe room where we can go into the police station, not to be judged, to be listened to. The room should be nice and calm and with trained staff, and there should be a trained person to offer support to the victim. Information, advice and guidance is readily available online, but a framework of support needs to be created so that all agencies are aware of key organisations who could offer assistance. What I would like to see is improve is more funding to be available to help women trapped in these controlling relationships. Asking for help didn't take anything away from my independence or my ability to look after myself. If our bodies are broken, we don't feel ashamed to ask for help. Why should we feel ashamed when our minds are broken? <laughs>